Hi everyone, welcome to Frappe School. My name is Lynette Sharon and this is the fourth chapter in our website management course. Today, we will be discussing to publish web forms using ERP Next. By the end of this chapter, you will know creating web forms, writing scripts for web forms, enabling payment gateway in web forms. External stakeholders like leads, customers, job applicants or partners may need to share certain data with you. For example, job applicants need to create job applications, customers need to register a complaint, partners need to share some data. You can let such data be collected via web forms in ERP Next. This saves enormous amount of time for your employees. You can build web forms based on any doc type in ERP Next. For example, you can publish a web form based on job application so that when applicants fill the form and save it, a job application record is created in ERP Next and the recruiter in your company can further process it. Similarly, you can let your prospects to create a lead directly via a simple web form. This removes the need for manual creation of records based on email. You can even enable payment gateways on web forms, which will allow you to collect payment from visitors. For example, you may have a conference or a consulting session, which visitors can book and pay for. Web forms refer to any kind of forms that collect information on a website. For example, contact us forms or reach out to us forms that allow you to fill in details and submit them. We can see the list of web forms in our system by going to the website section in the website module and opening web forms. We can even search for it using the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of pre-existing web forms and we can create a new one by clicking on the Add Web Form button. Once we open a new web form, the first thing we have to do is set a title for the web form. Let's name it Register as Partner. The route will automatically be set according to the title that we have chosen. Next, we can select the doc type based on which we want to create the web form. Suppose we want to set the web form to be created from registration, then we can select that doc type. Then click on get fields button on top right. This will load all the fields according to the doc type selected. Let's see the features that we can control using these checkboxes. The is multi-step form checkbox can be used to define whether the form is divided into parts that require multiple steps. We can select the published checkbox when we want to publish this web form. The web form will only be accessible and shown on the website when published. If we want visitors to log in to fill up the form, we can select the login required checkbox. If selected, some more options are enabled like the route to success link which can be used to navigate to the success link once the form is submitted. The allow edit checkbox lets us edit the form after it is saved. If it is not selected, the form becomes read only once saved. Similarly, allow multiple checkbox lets us define whether visitors are allowed to fill the form more than once. Selecting this enables show as grid and allow delete options. The show as grid checkbox enables the records to be shown in a table format and the allow delete checkbox lets visitors delete entries they have created. If we have any role permissions applied to this doc type, they will be auto applied to this web form if we select the Apply Document Permissions checkbox. 
the allow comments checkbox shows comments to be added on the form that is created the allow print checkbox allows users to print the document if selected we can select the print format next we can use the show attachments checkbox to enable the display of any attachments on the form and lastly the allow incomplete forms checkbox lets visitors submit the form with partial data filled next using the introduction section we can add any introduction text or message that we want to show above our form moving on let's have a look at the field section as we have done before the current fields are based on the doc type we have selected we can change the labels for these fields we can also add or delete fields it is recommended to keep forms as minimal as possible so that they don't become cumbersome to fill we can even set a maximum attachment size here once we updated the field list according to our preference we can click on save then see on website button in the sidebar to view the web form we can also use the client script field to write client scripts which are small code snippets that are executed in the browser to extend or customize the standard functionality of erp next for example validating your inputs auto filling values showing a success message or any arbitrary action we can customize the look and feel of our web form by writing our own custom css here in the custom css section next in the actions section we can add a label to our button for the form the default is set to save we can even define the message in the success message field for example thank you for registering this text will be shown to the visitor once they successfully submit the web form then this user will be directed to the success url defined we can add the route to home here next in the sidebar settings section we can use the show sidebar checkbox to show contextual links in a sidebar on your web form once selected we can add sidebar items in the table here we will need to add a title a route a reference to a doc type and the role for any new sidebar item
Next, we can use the payment section to add a payment gateway to the web form if we want visitors to pay against the form. To activate payments, we need to select the Accept Payments checkbox. First, we need to select an integrated payment gateway, for example, Paytm. Then, we can add a label for the button label, which will be Pay Now, and add a button help, which allows us to seamlessly accept payments on our website. Next, if the doc type we've selected has a currency field, then the amount can be taken from there using the amount based on field checkbox. If not, we can manually type in the amount as well. We can also select the payment currency here. Lastly, there is an advanced section where we can do things like add a web page link to the form if it has one and add breadcrumbs as well. Once we've configured this web form according to our preference and use, we can save it. This brings us to the end of the fourth chapter in our website management course. I hope this helped you understand how to set up and publish web forms using ERP Next. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss blogs and help articles. Thank you.